I am right now in Stavanger, Norway, because my mom is competing in one of the strongest chess tournaments in the world, Norway Chess. Now in round four of Norway Chess, my mom played against one of the most fascinating grandmasters in the world, Ramesh Babu Vaishali. Now this girl is 22 years old, she recently became a grandmaster, but she's also the sister of one of the best chess players in the world, Pragnananda. Now, Pragnananda and Vaishali are the first sibling, sibling couple, sibling pairs, <laughs> where both are grandmasters. Like there's literally nobody else in the world that has this, that both, both the sister and the brother are grandmasters. And I think that it is so cool to see. They both got a medal at the Olympiad in Chennai, India a few years ago. I was there, it was in 2022. It was so cool to see both sister and brother get a medal. It's been so cool to see both of them performing so well. And when this game was played, they were both leading their respective tournaments. Pragnananda was leading the open section of Norway Chess and Vaishali was leading the woman's section. I think that Vaishali is so cool and I actually played her a few years ago and got absolutely demolished in a classical game. <laughs> so I was excited to see how it went between my mom and her. Now my mom had the previous day almost beaten the female world chess champion Juin Jun, but she had missed a tactic and it had ended in a draw and today she had a new game to play. Now, I think that she had very much put that blunder beside and she was thinking about this as a completely new game because the whole day I saw her just being very happy and excited to play Vaishali. So the game started with d4, my mom had the white pieces and she went knight f6, c4, g6, and this became a Grunfeld. And my mom was actually expecting her to play a Grunfeld. My mom and my dad are preparing every single day and they were expecting this. So she played knight f3, and here we have takes and takes and e4. Now, the idea with the Grunfeld is that white gets a lot of center, but black gets a lot of uh, good pieces and will wait a little bit before taking control of the center, but will later on play c5, well, right now, and immediately attack the center and sometimes white will end up getting a little bit of weak pawns here. It looks like white just has an amazing position but these pawns they're actually slightly weak and you will see what I mean now. So my mom played bishop e3 defending this pawn very logical and then Vaishali immediately played bishop g4 and the idea of this is that she's pinning this knight which is the piece that is right now defending this d4 pawn and she already has a few questions to answer. How does she defend this d4 pawn? So my mom went bishop b5 check and now Vaishali played knight c6. She doesn't really want to play knight d7 because then she's going to be blocking the queen from threatening this pawn and right now this pawn is the focus. Obviously if you, if my mom would lose a central pawn like this in the opening she would just be completely losing. So she needs to defend the pawn. So knight c6 was played, my mom castled, castles, and now it was the time to figure out how to defend this. And she spent quite some time here thinking, because she had a few options. She could either play something like d5, she could play something like rook c1, or she could take this knight. Now the immediate threat right now, if my mom does nothing, such as a3, is for Vaishali to simply capture this knight and then take this pawn. And we can see that after takes, she has a lot of pieces that are attacking it. So here, my mom decided to play something that I believe Hikaru played a while ago in this position. I'm not exactly sure, so don't quote me, but when I was talking about this game, there were people in my, in my Twitch chat that were saying that he had done this. And the move is bishop takes c6. Now, the idea of this is that she is getting rid of her bishop pair, which is sad because the bishop pair is really good in chess, but she's eliminating the piece that is really threatening this pawn. But now she has, once again, she needs to do something to defend this pawn because if Vaishali takes this knight and my mom takes with the queen, this pawn would be hanging. So my mom did this move that was really interesting. I thought she would play something like rook c1 so that after takes and takes, this pawn is hanging. But instead she played this move queen a4 and the reason I thought this was a little bit sh not shocking in the moment but I was kind of surprised was because my mom was basically letting Vaishali get this pawn structure um, or, or she was letting herself get this pawn structure if Vaishali took this knight. 
So she ended up not doing it immediately. She first took this pawn, which is very smart because now my mom had to make a choice on if she should take with the pawn or the knight. I thought she would take with the knight to simply get rid of the threat of her capturing the knight and getting these double pawns, but she took with the pawn and simply accepted the fact that this knight would probably be taken. So I actually played c5 because otherwise this pawn is hanging and my mom simply played rook a d1, getting the rook out of this diagonal but also defending this pawn. So now Vaishali took on f3 and my mom has to take back. We see this pawn structure and now there were just a lot of trades. We see that there were lots of trades here and it ended up, ended up becoming this queen and rook end game where it's equal material but my mom has these bad pawns. So even though it looks like it's completely equal, my mom is now the one that is slightly worse and practically this is not as easy to play as it looks. So queen b6 was played and my mom played this nice move rook d1, doubling up the rooks and avoiding rook d8. If for instance the rooks would be traded in this position and it ended up just being a queen endgame, I think this would be an immediate draw because it's really, really, really hard to threaten all these pawns with only one piece. I mean, if the king stays on g2, the king is gonna be safe. It's gonna be hard for Vaishali to do anything. So my mom actually really wants to trade the rooks. She went queen f6, threatening now this pawn, and my mom went queen a3, which is a really nice move. Not just defending this pawn, but also wanting to bring this queen to e3 to defend everything. So rook c8, she's trying to take the open file, queen e3, and now king g7. Reason being that if rook c6, there could be some nice ideas with queen h6 for my mom, where she's threatening checkmate, and Vaishali didn't want to allow this. So she put the king on g7 so that this queen could never get up to the square. So my mom went king g2, this is the sort of move that is very natural to play. The king always wants to be on g2 because it's better placed here, defending this pawn. And now rook c2, threatening the a pawn. My mom, like I said before, wanted to trade rook, so she simply went rook d2. And Vaishali traded the rooks and then went rook c8, maybe threatening a little bit to go rook c3. Here, my mom decided to just simply trade queens and went queen d4 because she thought that if they trade queens, this is going to be a simple draw. Or not simple, but it would at least she thought it would be a draw as without the queens on the board, yes, black is slightly better because of these pawns, but the less pieces for my mom, the better, the harder it is to attack these double pawns. And I think she just thought it would be a draw then. So here, uh, rook c3 was played, threatening this pawn, and this is a nice move as it activates the rook, and now after my mom trades, the king also gets active. And here she did the very important move f4, stopping the king from entering. Now here we have this rook end game, where black is slightly better because this rook is more active, black's pawns are a lot more solid, this king is quite active, but more importantly, because white has these double pawns. If this position was like this, they could just literally sign the papers and agree to a draw right now. But because the pawns are like this, it's not as simple. So, <clears throat> rook a3 was played. Now, putting pressure on this pawn, the rook has to stay here. She, my mom cannot lose this pawn. So she played h4, preventing any g5 idea at any point. King e6 and now f3. This was very solid and in this position I was sure that this would end in a draw. Here my mom, uh, Vaishali played f5 and my mom did the move that she uh, thought after the game was probably her worst move. Not because her move was bad but because the move she did made her position a little bit more practically difficult to play. Here if my mom simply plays something like e5, this king will never be able to get to a2 and capture this pawn, which is black's only idea. Black, to win this game, must win this pawn. It's the only thing they can do. So black needs to find a way of pushing this pawn, bringing this king, and then somehow with the king and the rook win this pawn. Now after this move e5, this becomes extremely difficult because the moment the king starts wandering off over here, it's going to be easy for my mom to capture this e pawn. And if my mom captures this e pawn, she's gonna have equal chances of winning as her e pawn is gonna be just as strong as the a pawn. So this was something that she didn't realize during the game, but something that she realized after the game that this would have made it very easy for her to draw. However, in this position after f5, 
She decided to capture the pawn, which is not a bad move. The problem is just that these pawns end up being very weak. But she thought that after king g3, there wasn't really any way for Vaishali to advance. Like I said before, her only way of advancing here is to bring this king over here. And I think that my mom thought that with the rook on e2, etc., it would be really hard for the king to wander off this far. But Vaishali was pushing for the win here. Vaishali played a5, and my mom just simply started moving her rook back and forth. She even played king g4, kind of signalizing that if this king wanders off, she's going to put the rook on f2, she's going to bring up this king, and then try to go for this. So Vaishali started playing a few moves, and they were just going back and forth. And now she played h5, preventing this king from ever going up and then going for this plan. So my mom was just going back and forth here, thinking that this was just a draw, and if you look at the engine, this is just a draw, but the thing is, that this draw is not as easy as it looks. For my mom to truly understand that this is a draw, my mom needs to see certain lines where this king comes down over here, black wins this pawn, my mom has to sacrifice the rook but win these two pawns in advance and calculate the fact that the king and this pawn will be able to... Um, be as fast as the rook, the opponent, Vaishali, will have to sacrifice her rook, and at the end, my mom would win this pawn, but this king would end up over here and be on time to stop this pawn from promoting. That is how this is a draw. <laughs> so even though right now the evil bar says that it's a draw, everybody, you know, we were all, when I was watching this live, saying, oh, this is a simple draw, I realized quickly that this, just because the engine says it's a draw, human-wise, it's a draw, but you need to calculate a lot of moves ahead. They don't have so much time. There are ways my mom can go wrong here. So she played a4, and here my mom went rook d2. And now Vaishali's idea is basically to push this pawn. So here my mom needs to play, well, she can play a lot of different things. She can play rook b2, she can play rook d4, which is what she did, threatening this pawn. Now if the rook comes back, my mom can come back, and if they repeat, it's a draw. So what Vaishali needs to do, is she, if, she needs, if she wants to push for the win, is to play a3. And now the point is that my mom needs to stand behind the pawn and attack it, so that if this rook wanders off and tries to win this pawn, my mom can win Vaishali's pawn. So this is where she starts bringing up the king. My mom went rook a5, and now rook d3 was played. Now here my mom can actually just simply go rook a7, and just basically allow this king to enter. The idea being that after um, king b4, the king is now defending this pawn, now black is threatening to go rook d2 and win this pawn, she can go rook b8 check, and after something like king c4, she can go check, and now basically there's going to be a million checks. So in this position, this plan that I said is not as simple, but there are there were positions where this rook would be on c3, and then the king could maybe go through c2, b1, and try to win this pawn, but that would still be a draw. But my mom was scared of all of this. So instead in this position, she ended up doing the move rook g5. And this move is okay, but it makes it a little bit more practically hard for her now. Now Vaishali went rook d1, they repeat it once. My mom only had five minutes and there's only a 10 second increment here, so there's very little extra time per move. So she went back to g5, and now Vaishali did the critical move, rook d2. And I was kind of wondering what happens if she goes rook d2, because now the problem is that my mom is losing this a pawn, and this a3 pawn is just two steps away from promoting. I, I, I am confusion. What? Going back and forth, what happens if rook d2? What happens if rook d2? I'm about to go crazy. I do not understand this. I don't know if this is beyond my level or what this is. I don't understand. What happens if rook d2 in this position? The only th like, what? And the moment I play this move, the engine says it's winning for black. Why is nobody doing this? Now my mom's plan here was that after she takes this pawn, rook takes a2, she has this move f5, and basically what she wanted to do was that she wanted to play with this f pawn, I think, uh, against this a pawn. But after rook e2, my mom did a huge blunder. Up until this point, my mom had played with 98.5 accuracy and Vaishali around 99% or 99.5. So both had played an extremely strong game. But here for my mom to draw the game, 
she needs to go rook g8 and she needs to place the rook behind the pawn. The idea here is that after she sacrifices this pawn, she's able to bring up this king and this after rook a8 is going to be a draw. However, this was not my mom's idea when she played rook g5 and that is why I'm saying that this move was practically harder because she needed to see this move rook g8 if she's going to do this. Staying on the a file was a lot of an easier draw because then she only needs to see the fact that she's going to be able to check and at some point she'll be able to win these pawns and then she'll be able to push this pawn. But here it was hard to see that after this move she cannot take on e6 first. Why can she not take on e6 first? Because actually Vaishali's rook is so much better placed on e6 than what it is on e2 because the rook will try to do these, this sort of maneuver and place itself behind the pawn. So after f takes e6, my mom was actually losing the game. And this was a heartbreaking blunder because she had played for four and a half hours or four hours, almost perfect chess. We had all thought that it was going to be a draw for so long and all of a sudden she was losing. I just wonder, why does my mom do this to herself? Like, she didn't have to do this. Is it because she needs some adrenaline? <laughs> Is it because she knows that there's a bunch of people watching here? She must up. She must up. She must up. She didn't have to mess up, but she must up. I was still praying that Vaishali wouldn't see the best moves, but the problem here is that Vaishali gets these moves with the tempo, and my mom doesn't have time to place the king up and start pushing this F pawn. It's just a little bit too slow. Here we see that. The rook ends up being able to come up to a5 and place itself behind the pawn. And here, there isn't much more to do. And in this position, my mother resigned. Why did she resign? Because after rook b1, a2, rook a1, there's going to be king b2. The rook has to move somewhere. And now, this position is winning uh, for black. If this pawn was a little bit higher up, if this pawn was an f6, this would be a very different story, I think. But because this pawn is so far away, this is a very simple draw. Because this rook will sacrifice itself for this pawn, but this king will be able to capture this and then this pawn will promote. So my mom unfortunately lost the game against Vaishali and this was her first loss in the classical games in this tournament. She never thought she was going to lose this game, but she definitely knew that she was worse in the rooking game and that she would have to fight for the draw. And I think she was sad after the game that she lost such a drawn endgame in such a, you know, um, not stupid way, but in, a, in an unnecessary way, maybe is the word. So my mom is still fighting today, or well, the round after, after this, round number four, there was a rest day. So round five is after all the competitors have had some time to relax and rest and I know that my mom was going to get a massage and she was going to really just try to start kind of a new tournament after this because obviously losing in classical is not fun at all. She spent four hours playing this game and she loses in this way. She was obviously quite sad after this but she's going to keep fighting and I am just so proud of her for being here and competing against some of these you know strong strongest women in the world. Wish her luck for the next game and I will keep on showing you her journey here at Norway Chess. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you all for the recap of round five.